frontline world. Stories from a small planet. Dubai, a Middle Eastern oasis built on sand and decadent dreams. As one of the seven United Arab Emirates formed in 1971, this port city, which lies on the north coast of the Persian Gulf, was once valued for its oil. Today it's a tax-free haven for tourists and guest workers, foreign men with disposable cash, busy schedules, and persistent loneliness. Nearly 85% of the million and a half people living here are foreign-born, with men outnumbering women nearly three to one. As a photojournalist, I have reported on young women sold into sex for the last four years. On my last reporting trip to Moldova, I met a 19-year-old woman who was trafficked to Dubai for sex, at times serving more than 30 clients per day against her will. Because of her story, Dubai became a place that I had to see in order to understand such evil. What I found was a city of contradictions, Muslim traditions mixed with capitalism on steroids. Beneath Dubai's futuristic facade, the sex trade is something that some people can choose to overlook. You don't see them. It's not uh, like anywhere else. It's not like anywhere else? No. Like uh, prostitution somewhere else, it's uh, on streets. There's uh, no such thing anyway. Officially, it is very hard to get anyone to talk openly about prostitution. There are many taboos in this business-driven economy, like child camel jockeys and overcrowded, inhumane labor camps like this one. An investigative journalist who reports on trafficked laborers was willing to talk anonymously. Do I have uh, another good business than labor business? Oh. That's prostitution. Yeah. You can do stories on girls bringing from India who have been abandoned in uh, flats for years. Here in Dubai. Knowing how risky a story on prostitution is, how many could be deported if they decided to talk to us, my camera woman fashioned a handbag with a hidden night vision camera, and we headed into the night. Everyone knew the most popular sex tourism spots. A Google search for Dubai sex tourism turns up discussions of numerous downtown hotels and nightclubs. When I arrived at one, it seemed at first like any other nightclub. But it didn't take long before I was propositioned. How much you want? I played along. One thousand. One thousand? Yeah. How much something you let me hear from five hundred? But the women's faces I saw in the bathroom, from China, Ghana, Ethiopia, Morocco, Uzbekistan, these were not the broken spirits I expected to meet. Instead, Dubai's sex workers refer to themselves as businesswomen, dealing their profitable flesh by phone and through clubs like this. I took photos amazed by how invisible I had become. Their minds were elsewhere, applying lipstick, counting cash, dialing numbers, adjusting bras. Price depends on nationality. Chinese are the cheapest, around 150 U.S. dollars. Then Africans and Eastern Europeans. Middle Eastern women fetch the highest amount, up to 1,000 U.S. dollars per night. I tried to find someone willing to be interviewed, but most would not talk on camera. I decided to reach Eastern European women by writing in Russian in a bathroom stall. In other countries I've worked, women refused to talk for fear of retaliation, but I sensed there was a different reason here. It's as if they had been hypnotized by Dubai's wealth. Even though many sex workers were lured here by false promises of legitimate jobs like childcare or waitressing, once they realize how much they can make in the clubs, 
the fast, abundant cash and selling sex is hard to turn down. Maria, a 45-year-old prostitute who I met in a club for older gentlemen, agreed to talk in a cab. She had a surprising reason to be here. Romance. It seemed unbelievably naive. I couldn't comprehend how selling your body could be a rational choice. But Maria insisted that she was not being forced. A man from Tunisia who propositioned me told me that every woman in Dubai has a price, and many here can afford to pay it. John, a former American serviceman who I met in a nightclub, explained how he has seen women seduced by the cash. Imagine a girl who's been in a bad economic situation all her life, and now you offer her everything. Oof, that's intoxicating to them, you know? At least for a while, until the, the thrill is gone. Until the thrill is gone, she's going to be like sucking that up. Until she figure out she sold herself and she get that feeling on the inside where she has nothing left. She's going to be like, damn, how did I get to this place? You know, but that's a, a time for that to happen. Until that time happens, she's going to enjoy the trips and enjoy the jewelry and enjoy the this, enjoy the that. I went to see Sat, a young, intelligent PR executive from Singapore. Even she, a successful businesswoman, has pondered the allure of prostitution. People get into prostitution without realizing it. It becomes such an attractive, lucrative trade. You really can make a lot of money. You know, even I was curious once. I was like, really? How much money can you really make? Even I was asking, what would my price be? You know, how much can I really make? With so many men here, Seth says prostitution makes Dubai safer. It is fortunate for us that sex is a trade out here because otherwise I would feel highly harassed. I will, I'm already sometimes feeling harassed to an extent. So imagine if prostitution was not there. It is a very sad thing to say, but you know what? If someone makes a choice to join the trading industry, you know, that's just their prerogative, really. I wondered if I was the only person who still felt that permitting prostitution was a choice that dishonored us as women. In this traditionally Muslim country, even a human rights activist explained it away as an unavoidable consequence of modernization. We are a, an extreme uh, globalized uh, place. Uh, with the minimal uh, regulations, and this is where it is uh, exploited. And uh, our uh, legal system isn't really growing fast to, to catch, it because also our government is scared of regulations that they may, you know, turn off uh, businesses or investors and, you know, in all these developments and so on. In fact, all of the notorious sex clubs carry the seal of the Department of Commerce and Tourism. But this is about capitalism. You invented it. You brought it to the world. We are just uh, being, you know, the latest students of the system. The country is trying to attract business and keep it by any means necessary, he said. For now, in the clubs of Dubai, there appear to be no efforts to enforce laws against prostitution. And as long as the government continues to license clubs like these, it appears all they really want to protect is Dubai's reputation as the playground of the Middle East. And those young women from poor countries say the money is just too good. Sasha from Siberia finally agreed to go on camera. I think uh, their country is not good for jobs, for money, it's because of this. They are not having another choice, I think. But some of them have choice and they are like this business and come. Because it's uh, easy to make money in this country. It's easy when you're, when you're a business lady, when you're... Yeah. I go to the club usual 11 o'clock, come back home 5 o'clock, a little bit sleep, read, talk with friends, and they gain the same every day. The price is what, 500? Or? Yeah, one hour it's 500, it's night it's 1,000.
Three hours. From what time to what time? From three until. From three to six. Mm -hmm. Or from two to five. When the call to prayer sounds at dawn, it reminds the girls their shift has ended. But at what price? When you were a little girl, okay. when you were growing up, what did you want to be one day? Mm. What was your dream? A teacher. And now? Now, I don't know what I want, really. Because I'm too tired. Do you think this has changed you? Yeah. On my last day in Dubai, my hotel room was ransacked. All of my equipment and reporting materials were stolen. Mine was the only room in the hotel to be vandalized, and initially the front desk refused to call the cops. That morning, as my camera woman rushed to catch her flight, she was detained by airport security. All of her videotapes were confiscated. We had been watched and followed. It was only after making a spectacle that they returned her tape saying they had mistaken her identity. Her luggage did not arrive until a month later, but a few of Dubai's night secrets made it out. There's more of the world to explore on our website. Discuss the world and tell us what you think of our stories from a small planet at pbs.org.